Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm super excited for today. Um, we got an alligator hunting video for you. We got Maggie in the boat. Good morning. We're in the Ginu and uh, yeah, I'm super excited. So I've made one alligator hunting video uh, thus far. It was, it was super fun. Maggie and I got about a six footer. That was our first time hunting out of the Ginu. Now the Ginu is small, it's about 15 foot four inches and about three foot wide. It's pretty small for alligator hunting and there's only two of us. So usually alligator hunting is like a three or four man job because there's so many jobs, it can be hectic as well. Um, it's just me and Maggie today in a small boat. So we're gonna see if we can kind of upgrade our gator. The last time we got a six footer, we got some meat in the freezer, which was really awesome. It's deli it was delicious. And uh, yeah, today we're gonna try to go for an eight footer or bigger, but I don't think we can handle anything much over nine because the boat is small and can only handle, can only handle so much weight. Um, I think a nine footer would might be pushing 200 pounds. That would be too heavy for the skiing. So we gotta find something in the right range, but Alligator hunting is just quite a bit different than fishing. It's a little bit more graphic. Just warning you guys, if you don't like alligator hunting, it is, um, I'm just throwing that warning out there. This isn't like fishing, but however, we're gonna be taking, you know, an animal's life the same way we do with fishing. And uh, we're gonna put some meat in the freezer, which feels a lot better than, you know, going and buying it at the store. So that's our goal for today. Just a warning, this isn't fishing. This is alligator hunting. Yeah, I'll explain it a bit more throughout the day, but right now we got a couple off to our left. We're gonna go maybe poke around, see if we can get lucky early and see if we can get lucky. That's ultimately, this the alligator hunting is tricky. It can be hard and uh, yeah, let's get going. It's currently seven o'clock, sun's just starting to rise. Let's do it guys. All right guys, we got a gator just behind us over here in the bushes. We're gonna poke around, see if I can get him. Um, but real quickly, I wanna show you guys the setup for today. Um, Right here, 6,500 pen slammer four, 40 pound braid. Then we got a pen carnage two that's rated for 40 to, no, yeah, 40 to 80 pound braid. So this is like a super stiff, like a, kind of like a boat rod, perfect for alligator hunting. I've used it for tarpon as well. But um, in gator hunting, you use a snatch hook, at least the uh, technique we're doing it. You can, you can bait for them, but we're using a snatch hook. And this is just some uh, 200 pound hollow core braid kind of as like a tippet, right where that gator's gonna be spinning and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, one important thing about gator hunting is this hook right here, it doesn't actually go into the gator. Like it's not gonna pierce their skin. It's pretty much just gonna like grab them because their skin is so, so thick. It just grabs them. So you have to keep the rod really tight while gator hunting. And uh, if you let it loose, it can definitely, you can lose the gator, so. Gator hunting is exciting, but we're gonna start throwing this thing around, seeing, seeing if I can grab one. There is one right behind us. He looks like he might be about seven to eight foot, so we'll see what we can do. He's being dumb right now, so. Why am I not positive that's a gator? See if he'll let me get a little closer. He's being really dumb. Ready, Maggie? No way. Come on, come on, come on. Here, Maggie, you find him, you find him, you find him. Just keep him tight, keep him tight, keep him tight. I'm gonna go this way. This is the right one. Yep. Lean up against the cooler if you can, just for stability. Oh, this is the right one, Maggie. This is the right one. Keep him tight. Keep him tight. Yeah. He's worth it, that's a good one. He's definitely bigger than the last one. Nice. <laughs> All right, I gotta push this way, he's fighting good. This is the right one. Just keep him tight. He's going for the trees. Get him tight. Tighten down the drag just a little bit, tighten down the drag just a little bit. Pull. Pulling, people pulling. Yep, he's coming, he's coming. He came out of the trees. Pull as hard as you can, Maggie. I 
need to get closer this side. Yep, you got him. Keep them tight, there you go. All right, we're on a one bigger than the last one. I think this one's closer to eight foot. Yep, keep pulling them, keep pulling them. That was awesome. You got him out of the trees because he wanted it so badly to get up in there. All right. How did I get him? You good? All right, let me get the harpoon ready. We're going to get this gator. All right, I'm going to harpoon him, and you're going to bang stick him. Let's see where he's at. Let's do this, Maggie. Let's do this. Yeah. Yep. Woo! Careful on the trolling motor. Careful on the trolling motor. All right. This one is fired up. Yep, he's definitely bigger than the last one. Okay. Definitely bigger than the last one. You can loosen up just a little bit on him. I just don't want him in the trolling motor. You nope, you're okay. Just let's we're gonna keep wearing them down real quick and then we'll switch it up. This is definitely tough with two people because typically you'll have a third person with a bang stick. Pulling them up here. All right, yeah, this one's a lot better, a lot better gator. All right, <laughs> let's give him just another second, and then we're gonna switch up here, we're gonna get you the bang stick. The problem is we just don't have him in the head anywhere. So we're kind of pulling his legs up, his head is staying lower. He definitely has a lot more weight on him compared to the last one. Yeah. <laughs> and he's probably about, he's, he's probably about seven. All right, this is going to be the tricky part is getting the bang stick loaded and getting them killed. So I'll trade you. I'll hold both here. I've got the rod and the harpoon. We're going to figure out how to get his head up. All right, good grip on the thing. Keep it pointed over the... You know where to hit him, and I'll let you know when it's time to hit him. Oh, i got to tighten up just a little bit. When he gets to about six inches below, you can hit him. <sighs> hit him right there. That should have done it. That should have done it, Maggie. Hey, nice job. <laughs> Good job. Let's go. That should have done it. Yeah, he's dead. That's a dead gator. Great job, Maggie. <laughs> Fighting him. This one, he was a dumb one. He's got a lot more weight on him than our last gator. Great job. That was perfect for our second hunt out of the Ginu. Perfect gator. All right, now we got to get him up and get him taped up. Hard. Yep, just a little bit more weight on the gator. You see how much differently he fought? He's probably yeah. about he's probably about seven, so he's about. It's crazy the the difference in length and yeah. the weight. Before. So yeah, you can imagine like a ten footer. <laughs> you can imagine a nine ten footer. The weight on him. I can see why they have like three hooks and a freaking ten plus <laughs> footer. That's crazy. Yeah, they're so strong. All right, so pull him up here. I'll grab him. We'll get him taped up and get him in the boat. Yes. Yeah, you hit him in the right spot. All right. Ooh. You're good. Get him taped up, and that'll be game over for him. Nice job. I can't believe that. Nice job. All right, let's bring him in here. Wow, he's definitely a lot heavier. You got him? Yeah, I got him. Let me see if I can pull this out real quick. All right. All right. That's weird. He was missing. 
yeah he's a lot bigger than the first one <laughs> i mean he's not a mega but it's just perfect for the ginu because yeah. i had full throttle on the trolling motor there heading away from the trees and he was pulling the ginu in reverse so that's a lot better one than our last video he's probably about seven let's go all right so we're gonna go ahead and tag the skater something you must do for it to be a legal gator because like i said before you can't just kill a gator that could put you in jail for a long time so we're gonna put a little cut in his tail here we're gonna tag him then this one we're gonna clean at home it'll be our first time cleaning the gator here's our tag we'll put it in put it right through his tail here all right well guys we just tagged our second gator of the season maggie's second gator and uh, it was about a seven footer, I think, right now. So it's about a foot upgrade from our last gator. A lot heavier, fought a lot, a lot harder. I mean, here, Maggie, why don't you tell them? What did you think for this gator in comparison to the last one? A lot stronger. A lot stronger? So it goes to show like how that much difference in length can be that much more weight and that much more strength. So. Right. A lot more meat, too, we'll get from yeah. this gator. Yeah, it'll be nice. Maybe even double? just feels a lot heavier a lot fuller it was so much harder to get into the boat i couldn't even imagine a 9 10 footer i don't mm -hmm. i really don't think we could get him in the boat i think we'd have to drag him back to the ramp if we got on that big but <laughs> i think that one is just perfect yeah awesome and a lot more, like more more real to kill it yourself uh-huh so awesome got a nice clean kill and i'm ready to clean it you did a great job with the bang stick for your first time thank you hit him right <laughs> in the perfect spot thank you so you guys probably can't tell by today but we ran all around 30 over 30 miles i think in search of them and we saw maybe three or four in this guy and they seem so smart today and i said like we're talking about oh, we're gonna have to come again what are we gonna do how are we gonna fill this tag and all of a sudden i dropped the trolling motor we're just cruising and right next to the boat popped up just like we weren't even there didn't care yeah, yeah pushing a huge wake too i thought it was a lot bigger but he was just back out of the water didn't have a care in the world and unfortunately he messed up so <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and run in. What an awesome day so far. These things are just such a blast. All right guys, back in the car now. Uh, we went over 35 miles today to get that gator, but we're going to take him home, clean him, and then we're going to cook him. Probably not going to show a whole lot of the cleaning because, well, one, YouTube usually doesn't like it, and two, I'm going to have to watch like a deer meat for dinner video to learn <laughs> to learn how to do it. Uh, I've, seen it been, I've seen it done before, but I need a, like, a video to walk me through it. We're going to clean it, we're going to vacuum seal it, maybe I'll show a little bit of that, and then uh, we're going to cook it. I don't know what we're going to cook right now, but we're going to figure it out between now and then. Maybe something fried. Fried gator is definitely my favorite, so... <laughs> Yeah, what an exciting day so far. Maggie, you got anything to say before we get into the like the cleaning and stuff? Nope. What would you think of today, overall? It was very fun. I'm um, glad that we tagged out and everything was done safely. That's important, safety. <laughs> safety is very important because, well, there's a lot of sharp things. There's bullets, there's big teeth, and gator hunting is a lot of fun. So, all right, let's uh, head on home and uh, we're going to get to cleaning it. Let's do it. All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen here. Um, before we get into all the kitchen activities today, I just wanna let you guys know I got some new JM Fish Co. t-shirts up on the website. We got these Space Snook t-shirts, got an astronaut holding a snook here. I really like it. Um, go check it out. I should have all these sizes available right now. And uh, maybe check out some stickers and stuff as well. I got some cool stuff on my website. Um, but yeah, that's that. Let's uh, let's get into the kitchen activities. So yesterday we had a really good hunt. Um, we got the gators just under seven foot, I think, and or six foot six foot eight. So it was eight inches bigger than our last gator, but it was much much heavier. It was like a, I guess a denser gator. It had it was way heavier, and it was only eight inches longer. So it was just a lot more filled. We can say that. Uh, maybe it was fatter, we could say that as well. So uh, we got all the meat cleaned. It took us probably about two hours. Um, Maggie and I both did it. And uh, like I said, we followed like a deer meat for dinner video and it was pretty easy. Um, I got all the meat right beside me here in a cooler. It's been on ice for the past 24 hours, but 
today I'm just gonna kind of take a look at it. We're gonna clean it up a little bit, um, dry it, get it ready to be vacuum sealed. I'll show you guys that whole process. And then later tonight, when Maggie gets home from work, um, I had college classes this morning, so I'm off a little bit early. And uh, we're gonna make some mock shoe, Cajun mock shoe, which is like a corn dish, super good, I love it. And then uh, we're gonna do some Cajun roasted broccoli and some Cajun fried alligator, which is my favorite. I've had gator a few different ways now, and uh, it is definitely my favorite way to have it. I mean, who doesn't love fried food? Um, so yeah, let's take a look at this gator. I think I'm just gonna have to cut some pieces off, make sure there's no skin on it, dry it up, and I'll show you the vacuum, uh, the get vacuum sealing process. All right, so we got three different pieces of the alligator here. This part right here is just the, uh, this is the like regular tail meat. Then we got the tenderloin, which is under the tail meat, which people say is super, super good. I don't know if I've ever had it, but it feels very, uh, feels a lot different than this right here, which is the, you know, the regular alligator tail meat. And then we have the cheek right here, or the, I think it's the jaws people call it, but people say it's really, really good. So basically all I'm doing is taking all my gator, checking it out, cleaning it, and I'm gonna put it in this bowl right here, and then we're gonna weigh it because I'm really interested to see how much all of our meat weighs from the gator. All right, so I just went ahead and cleaned up all the meat and uh, honestly, it wasn't a whole lot of like cleaning. There's just a few pieces with little pieces of skin and stuff on them. Uh, maybe a little bit of blood here and there. So I just cleaned it, dried it the best that I could. And now I'm gonna weigh all the meat to see how much we got. So the bowl weighs about a pound, it weighs 14 ounces. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pile it on. I do have two arms and two legs with bones still in them. So I don't know if I'm supposed to cut the meat off the bones. Um, but I guess I'll just save it for now and maybe we'll roast it or something. I, I don't really know a recipe right now for the arms and the legs, but just saying there is the weight of the, the, the bones and the arms and the legs. We're already at 11 pounds, wow. I mean, check out this tenderloin. This is one of like four pieces, four, I think I took the tenderloin, took the tenderloin out in four parts, so that's crazy. That's just like a big chunk of meat. All right. Oh, I think we might do it. I think I was pretty much on the money with the weight. We're at 16 pounds. That's 17 pounds. And that is 17 pounds, 12 ounces in meat. So the bowl was 14 ounces. So it was just about, just about 17 pounds in meat. That's pretty crazy from a six foot eight gal alligator. We pretty much took everything we could while cleaning it. We did a good, a really good job. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the pieces out I'm gonna use for the gator tonight. Um, I'm gonna tenderize, I guess I'll have to tenderize all of it with a meat mallet. If you get it from the processor, they'll cube it for you, which makes it obviously a lot more tender, but I'm gonna do what I can with a meat mallet and then we'll, uh, we'll vacuum seal this stuff. All right, so I just weighed out some uh, gator tail here into a little over two pounds. This is what I'd probably use for a serving. We're gonna put this all in one vacuum seal bag. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. So I got my vacuum seal bag right here. I went ahead and labeled it with the date and what it is, gator tail. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and load it in. I'll try to put it in there nice and flat so it seals and compresses down nice and easy. I spent a good amount of time drying this gator tail as well because if you've ever vacuum sealed anything, you can't vacuum seal something that's wet. It just will not create a seal, at least for me. Maybe it's different for different vacuum sealers, but it won't create a seal. So let's see if I can do this here. We'll go ahead and load it up as uh, nicely as I can. All right, so I got it loaded up into the vacuum seal bag here. And now we're gonna put it right into the vacuum sealer and let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're gonna lock it in just like this. Lock, we're gonna hit the vacuum button and this is gonna suck all the air out and seal it off. So that's really nice because uh, in the freezer it saves you so much space and supposedly it keeps it fresher for longer. All right, so it sucked the air out, and now it's gonna put the seal on it. 
All right, it's done. Pop it open here. It looks like it did its thing perfectly. So right there, probably used a little bit too much bag, but that is a two pound section perfectly. That is perfect for a dinner right there. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the freezer and uh, do the rest of the meat. And I will see you guys at dinner time. All right, guys, we are back in the kitchen now. We got Maggie behind the camera. She's gonna help us out today. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through what I'm gonna be making today. Um, I'm not gonna go super in depth into how to make each individual thing um, because it's honestly pretty simple. I'll walk you guys through like the ingredients, but if you wanna find the more specific recipes and stuff like that, you can find them down in the description where I took my inspiration from. So we are gonna be making a Cajun mock chew, which is like a Cajun corn dish which really all you need for it is corn. We got uh, jalapenos and red peppers and we got onions. We're gonna go ahead and get started on that now because it takes about the longest. So here, Maggie, come on over here, come onto the oven and we're gonna get going on this. So we're gonna start off with our onions here. I got them chopped and diced and uh, we're gonna start off with some butter. So we got a hot, we should have a hot skillet here. We're gonna start off with about half a stick and we're gonna saute these onions. So we'll get them in there. Start off with our onions, and then we're gonna add our peppers in just a second. All right, so we're gonna let our onions start to get sort of a translucent color here. Give them a couple minutes, and then we're gonna add our peppers. Sauteing our onions, we'll let them get a little bit ahead. Now we're gonna add our red bell pepper and our jalapeno. This is going to be a decently spicy meal. So we'll get this mixed up, let it cook for a little bit, and I think we can move on to our broccoli after this. All right, so we're gonna do the mock shoe and then we're gonna do like a Cajun broccoli here. So really all I'm gonna do is just coat these, this broccoli, the florets. That's how you say it, right? Florets? Yeah, florets. Florets, okay. I'm just gonna coat it in some, I believe this is avocado oil, but any oil should work. We are going to roast it. We're gonna get them roasting and then we're gonna add some Cajun seasoning over the top of them later and some garlic. So we just tossed them in the oil there. A little secret, I cook broccoli in a toaster oven, which is kind of funny, but this like little serving size is perfect for just for me and Maggie or Maggie and I. So we're just gonna cook it at the highest this thing can go is 450. So we're gonna cook it at that in there. We'll turn it on, I'll check it in about 15 minutes. But yeah, a little tip. Or I don't know, I think it's kind of funny to, to cook broccoli in a mm -hmm. toaster oven. It's not very uh, <laughs> traditional, but it works. And now the main portion of this meal, which is our alligator. Really, really nice meat. This is all tail meat, I wanna say. There might be a few pieces of like the cheek in here, but I'm pretty positive it's all, or the most of it is from the tail. So I let that sit in buttermilk for the past three hours, buttermilk and hot sauce. So the meat is gonna be pretty spicy. And then our outer, our, um, what is this called? Breading. Breading. <laughs> our breading is a 50-50 between cornstarch and flour. Um, and then mixed in with it, we have Cajun seasoning, which Cajun seasoning is really easy to make. It's about five or six ingredients. Of course, I'll leave a, uh, a recipe down below, but super easy, you can't mess it up. I pretty much eyeball the whole thing. And uh, Cajun seasoning is pretty much a ingredient in all three of our, uh, of our dishes tonight. All right, hopefully everyone knows how to do this, but like I said, we're frying them. These are going to be super good. I cut them into little bite-sized pieces, so they're gonna be kind of like nuggets, but letting it sit in buttermilk, it just helps with uh, Breading, I keep wanting to say batter instead of breading. Batter is more liquidy. Yeah, I keep wanting Dry. to say uh, batter for some reason, but we're gonna coat them just like that. I'm gonna do a bunch here and then we're gonna get a batch going and get them cooking. These are gonna be so delicious. All right guys, so check this out. We got some nice brown uh, browning on our onions, our jalapeno and our red bell pepper here and we're gonna add our corn, so let's do this. Corn going in. This, I love corn. <laughs> <laughs> it's corn. All right, corn's in. Let's 
stir it in together. We're gonna add our Cajun, Cajun seasoning here in just a moment. But let's get it all mixed up here and let it cook. Cajun seasoning going in. Stir it up. Pretty much every dish is gonna have somewhat of a similar flavor, just used in a diff different application. All right, I think it's time to get our gator going too. Now that that's done, let's do it. Move over there. Fun fact, this cast iron pan is over 100 years old. Pretty neat. All right, that should work. Let me grab this guy so we don't make an absolute mess. We'll let that cook. Everything's cooking. We're looking super good right now. cook for a little over five minutes and they are super, super crispy. Exactly how I wanted them. Pick that up. Mm. Alright, that's one batch done. We're going to do one more batch. We should be about ready to serve. Alright, so we added some heavy whipping cream to our... Where did the spoon go? Oh. Our mock shoe. We're gonna stir it in. This is what's gonna make it very creamy. It looks a little bit liquidy right now, but we'll let it simmer here and uh, the liquid should dissipate. All right, so we pulled our broccoli out right now. It went in for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl here and now we're gonna mix it up with our Cajun seasoning and some minced garlic. And then we're going to put it back in for just a few more minutes, but let's get it mixed. A little bit of minced garlic, Cajun seasoning, and then we'll toss it. Toss it all together and we'll put it back in there for another two minutes. All right, let's finish off this plate here with some mock shao. That looks busting. We'll do a little sprinkle of some Cajun seasoning on everything just to finish it off. Why not? We got extra. And then what I think is honestly like the star of this dish, this is comeback sauce. It is one of my favorites. There's so many different combinations of different like Cajun swamp sauces and this and that. This one is by far my favorite. All it is is mayo, ketchup, Worcestershire, uh, garlic powder, and black pepper. I think it's the Worcestershire that makes it super good. It just has like this different taste compared to all the other, you know, these types of sauces. There's bang bang. There's all sauces that are kind of similar, but this is by far my favorite. So there we have it. Our gator bites, fried gator. Um, we've got our mock chow, the uh, broccoli, the Cajun roasted broccoli, and everything is looking super, super fire. I think I did pretty good. We did good. Gator was us, Maggie. So I'm gonna have Maggie try this. I'm gonna try it, but it all looks super awesome. Let's go ahead and have a taste. Well, there it is, guys, all said and done. Fried alligator with the comeback sauce, ain't nothing better. <laughs> All right, so one thing that I've noticed about the gator right off the bat, I just took a bite and I definitely ate a part, it was part of the cheek. So there was cheek in that meat and the cheek is much more tender than the, uh, the tail. Um, so one thing I would have done differently, because I've taken a bite of both now, I should have <laughs> I should have tenderized the tail, uh, the tail meat. Um, it would make it just a little bit more tender and just a little bit easier to bite through, but the flavor is still there. It's still very good. Not that it's tough. Yeah, it's not, it's not. It's not tough, but it's not like chicken. A little bit, a little bit chewier than it's chicken. It's not pulling apart very easily. Gator is known for being a little bit more tough but you can you can tenderize it you can do what you can you can cube it to get it to be better yeah a cuber would be nice mm -hmm. 
The mock shell shoe is very spicy. Have you taken a bite of it is yet? Is it shell or shoe? It's shoe. Mock shoe. Okay. M A Q U E S H O U X. Mock shoe. It's Cajun. Yes. Be careful with the corn, it is super spicy. Okay. <laughs> Be careful with the mock shoe. Spicy? <laughs> I told you it was spicy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a jalapeno, right? The jalapeno, Holy and I mean, cow. it does have a good amount of the seasoning, which the seasoning has cayenne in it. It's, it's weird because the first bite is sweet and creamy, like cream <laughs> corn. And then it hits you. And then give it a second and you're like. That's the good part Woo! though. <laughs> yeah, everything has tons of flavor. Very good. The fried gator in the comeback sauce, very comforting. Anything fried is comforting. And then the sauce is not really spicy. It's not really tangy. It's more just like savory. I guess that's the Worcestershire in, mm -hmm. it, in the ketchup. So, very good. I can't believe that we just like, the skater was alive yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird to go through the whole process. Um, but super awesome. Couldn't be happier to tag out for my first set of tags that I drew for and do them both on the Ginu. Yep. Process the second one ourselves, which I think we got way more meat than if we were to take it to the processor. It was a little daunting, um, a little nerve, <laughs> very nerve wracking for me because it's still like 80 degrees here in Florida. And we killed it like an hour 45 from the boat ramp. So just like that, that time is like ticking in my head and we need to hurry up and get this like meat on ice off the gear and on ice um we did it outside obviously we're not gonna bring a, a seven foot gator in the house and uh have the you know all that everywhere but i think we did all right um justin processed all the meat and took care of all that while i was at work today so that was really nice and yeah, it's really satisfying. Um, it's nice to not just kill an animal for sport, but to kill it with intention and with respect for feeding ourselves and in the future feeding a family. Um, you can't get any more organic, non-GMO <laughs> uh, right. farm, you know what I mean? Like no hormones than hunting, so super grateful that we got both gators this season and thank you for cooking it it's delicious you're welcome all right very last thing before we go today guys i just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video hopefully you watch this whole thing it's gonna be a long one but i really enjoyed today's video it's just different I'm trying my best to step out of my comfort zone I'm trying to cook more maybe add a little bit of hunting to the channel let me know down below camping camping that's true <laughs> And uh, let me know down below what you guys liked, maybe what you didn't like, and uh, what you guys would like to see in the future. So, for me and Maggie, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in that next video.